Welcome to the Salt and Light Serve Spotlight, brought to you by itsonlyhomeschooling.com, a website devoted to advocacy, community, and resources for homeschooling children with learning differences. In this podcast series, we highlight those who embody a servant's heart, both individuals and organizations, changing lives one act of service at a time. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our show. My name is Kimberly Bennett, and I am your host. If you're new here, welcome. Thanks for giving us a listen. A little bit about me. I am a licensed professional counselor turned homeschool mom of one. I'm also an advocate for homeschooling children with learning differences. But my real passion is community outreach and service. For more of my story and background, feel free to listen to episode one or check out my website at itsonlyhomeschooling.com. Script Morium Ministries serves up free resources for educators. When home education is seen in its proper place, seen as a gift, a blessing, an act of stewardship, and when it's embraced in humility, it's a lovely thing. Don Gregg From the quirky to the quintessential, By far a favorite in our home is Homeschool Awareness Month. Long before it was Script Moria Ministries, LLC, this ministry began as the Book Samaritan. Founded by a Christian mother and daughter duo in a home in Oklahoma, this faith-based, recycled homeschool supply resource center supported homeschool families nationwide. Working in a distribution center format, the Book Samaritan housed shelves of stored books and supplies available for redistribution via an application process. Materials were dispensed through local pickups and mail-out requests. Unfortunately, in the late 2010s, this beloved ministry closed its doors. But not for long. Sustained by the support of local sponsors, the Oklahoma community mounted a rescue operation of sorts. The Book Samaritan was re-envisioned as the Book Shack and continued to operate in borrowed and rented spaces. The Book Shack served the homeschool community for several years through the support of a team of volunteers and was assisted by monetary donations. Unfortunately, these efforts too experienced struggle and the book shack eventually closed its doors. Rebranding and Revival When God closes one door, He always opens another. Such was the case with this beautiful ministry. There is no obstacle on earth too big for the Lord. A homeschool family who had supported the OK Book Shack for years hated to see the legacy die. They felt called to continue the Lord's work. Deborah Waterman and her husband saw a need in the homeschooling community and decided to do something about it. Today, we chat with one of the founders of Script Morium Ministries. Let's listen to hear about how she answered the Lord's call on her heart to serve the homeschool community. <laughs> well, good morning. Today I have with me Deborah Waterman. She is the operating agent for Script Morian, the salt and light serve spotlight that we are featuring for May and for Homeschool Awareness Month. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Good morning. I'm happy to be here. This is exciting. Well, we are excited to have you. Let me just list a little bit of your accomplishments. You are a homeschool mom of six, an Air Force vet, and you are recently a double graduate for holistic, for your bachelor's degree in Mm -hmm. holistic integrative medicine and holistic nutrition. So you're just a little bit busy. I have been, yes. (laughs) Oh my 
goodness. Well, thank you for plugging us in to your yeah. very busy schedule. Happy we to are do very it. excited. To, yes, and we are very excited to feature Script Morium. It's been around for a little while and it's changed hands and changed names a little bit, but its purpose has always been the same. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of Script Morium, how it started, as far as, as far as you know, what it was before it was Script Morium and what the purpose of it is? Absolutely. Uh, it started out as the book Samaritan out of Pawhusk, Oklahoma, probably a good decade, maybe two ago. It's been around for a while because when we moved to Oklahoma over 10 years ago, we heard about it uh, a couple years into our homeschooling. And we went up there is, is this house. It was funded by a church. There were two ladies that volunteered. They even did mail order requests all over the United States. You had people coming in from out of states donating books. So it was just this great ministry that would have used or knew sometimes um, curriculum for homeschoolers. And we were blessed by it. And they had about oh, six, seven years ago, they had a tornado, I think, come through. And it took part of the roof off. And then they lost some of the uh, some of the curriculum and everything. And then they decided at that point, the church was just like, we're not going to, we're not going to fix the house. The two ladies had been doing it for so long. They just didn't get a lot of help. It was very overwhelming. And they just decided they were ready to kind of let it go. So they made a call out. And since we were very involved in it, we knew a couple other homeschool families that also decided, hey, we can't let this ministry die. This is just too good. This is really hit, hit my husband and I's heart. It was like, this this needs to, we need to keep this going if we can. So we had a couple other homeschool moms. They got trailers, big church vans, because you know, we're all big families <laughs> right up there. Yes, yes, Saved yes. as many of the books as we could, because they were just giving away whatever was left. There's like, come get it or it's going to get trashed ultimately. Yes. So we ran up there, got as much as we could, brought it back. And then that started the book Shack, which was run by a, fel a fr fellow homeschool friend, family member of mine or whatever. Um, we supported as much as we could, but honestly, she ran it most of the time. So she kept it alive as the book chef for about three or four years. It, it was in Prague at first. And then that location, it's volunteer space is what we were trying to get. So it was kind of hard. Sure. She got some volunteer space. She was able to keep that going for a couple of years in Prague. And then we got another volunteer space open up in Shawnee. So we moved to Shawnee, Oklahoma, which is close to where I lived um, and okay. tried to help as much as we could. And then that space shut down about uh, two years ago. So we said, well, let's go ahead. And we found, I had another friend who had a empty rental house that they're renovating that they couldn't rent out. They said, I said, we just need a place to put these books until we can get another space. They volunteered their space. So about a year later, my husband and I had been talking to another local church and we do a lot of homeschool activities with. And they have a big lawn and it's like, hey, here's an idea. Can we get a storage shed, like one of those barn, barn things? And just put the books in it because it doesn't need to be climate controlled, really. They're just, it just mm -hmm. needs to be kept out of the rain and as much moisture. And they said, yeah, we can't get you electricity or anything, but sure, use our lawn. So we were able to use our tithe account to purchase the building that it's a good size, 32 foot by 16 foot. So pretty decent size. Big. Um, we mm -hmm. had looked around for other options, but everything else was falling through. So we just were, were blessed to be able to buy that. We plopped it down in their back lawn and we've been buying shelves and we've been trying to start moving the inventory through. But at this point, um, keeping the ministry going that we had with Bibliomania up in Tulsa, because they give us a monthly donation, we are bursting at the seams. So <laughs> I am still working hard to get that going. Uh, we did rename it Script Morium at that point. Um, just because there were some aspects of how the other uh, mom had run the book shack that were not quite what the book Samaritan had be just just because out of necessity, she was trying to support her 501c3 and she needed to pay for liability insurance and all this other kind of stuff. So she was charging a membership, just a 10 year yearly membership to come and look. We wanted to get back to what the book Samaritan was, where it was freely given and freely you know, taken. It, everything is just in and out. It's just, it's just whatever. To the point that I don't even man the shop, I will unlock it and let you just go in and just request that you either text me or message me when you're done that you locked it up. <laughs> so it's slightly different, but it is go. getting back more to what that book Samaritan uh, original dream was. So that's kind of where we're at today. Well, that is wonderful. I love that it doesn't, didn't matter how many obstacles were put in the way of this. God said, no, that's okay. I'm going to make a way. He did. Mm -hmm. I want this. I mm -hmm. want this to happen. And he put it on your heart and several other people's hearts to ensure that it did happen. Yep. It's staying alive. <laughs> <laughs> and it is 
very much needed. I mean, as, as you and I are very well aware, this is only our fourth year that we've completed up homeschooling, but most the, the bulk of homeschool families are single income mm-hmm. and curriculum is quite expensive. Absolutely. And if you have more than one child, mm-hmm. it's, it's such a blessing to, to have this offered to you. I know when we're done with our curriculum, we just donate and we just give it mm-hmm. away. I'm like, here you go. Anyone? Yep. I'm not going to, and because we can, I know right. for many, they need to resell, but for the, to have something like this, that is that wonderful and free. Hey, just come get what you need yeah. and paying it forward. That is such a beautiful concept. Mm-hmm. Well, I would have loved to take credit for the concept, but I'm just, <laughs> we just fell in love with it. And we're like, this needs to stay. This needs to be a thing. So and we've been it able does, to do it I'm so, so far. So glad that you did. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Such a blessing to so many people. I wanted to talk with you just a little bit about the name Script Morian. It's a beautiful name. It's very different. It, it kind of sticks out in your brain because it's not something that I've actually seen or heard before. And it, I'm sure there's a story there. Can you share the story? There absolutely about is. The name? Yes. And I'm glad you appreciate it. It validates me a little bit. Um, when uh, we were trying to decide after it had been Book Samaritan and then Book Shack that I was like, oh, I'm just kind of, I don't know, the bookworm. What are we, how are we going to do this? Because we needed it to kind of have some context in what we, part of the ministry. It's like, what is it about? But also that we can share, and it would be a name that would kind of be like a little virus in your brain that would yes. st- stick out. And th- as much as the book Samaritan was very accurate to what it did, and then the book Shack mm-hmm. to me was like, it could have been a bookstore. I mean, you know, no dogging on the name, you know, she, she handled the way she needed to. But yeah. I was like, it just, I feel like it needs a little bit more. So I was talking to my husband who's also a brainiac. So, you know, we put our heads together and um, I was like, I just want something different. I just want to, you know, I want to be fun with it. Why not? We've got an opportunity here to, because it's ours now we could do it. He's like, well, how about scriptorium? And I was like, oh, I, that sounds cool. But what is it? I can't think right now. And he's, you know, got the vocabulary like, like I do, but I was just, it was, he's like, well, it's a place where the monks used to go and they would write and copy down scrolls. But it was mostly, I went back and looked at it. It's mostly about writing. And I said, okay, well, that's a great start, but we need to do something with it because it's more than writing because we're giving books out. It's more about reading, even though there are, there is stuff, I mean, because it's, it encompasses all of it. It's language, it's supplies, mm-hmm. it, we have it all. I mean, we've even had people donate computer, computers and it's like, well, I don't know mm-hmm. if they work, but here, if you want to maybe take it <laughs> apart, somebody can mess with it. Um, There's a whole so, school yeah. class. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So we're just, you know, and it's science and then all this stuff. And I was like, it's more than just a scriptorium, though. And then I was like, wait a minute, what about script morium? And he was walking with me. And he's like, huh, that kind of rolls off the tongue. That kind of, and I was like, I like it. I, like, I think you should like it too. <laughs> so he thought about it for a little bit and he said, yeah, why not? I mean, it's, it, it's, it's good. And I was like, yeah, we'll put in a little apostrophe in there and put the big M in there. And then he gets, yeah. I was like, so that's kind of how that came about. So it was a little bit my brainchild. I definitely, and that's how my husband and I work a lot, obviously. I mean, we're definitely a team in a lot of ways, but he'll get something or I'll get something and then he'll improve it or add to it. And then we get this beautiful, you know, connect the uh, completeness of an idea that it's, it's full, you know, and, and we're at least excited about it. So, but yeah, no, that's, that's kind of how that came about. Oh, well, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's almost a bit of a nod to classical education. It is. It's also a mm-hmm. nod to ministry and to learning uh-huh. as well. And it's punny. We love puns in mm-hmm. our house. So, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. You, you can't forget it, to be honest, which is exactly what you want. Exactly. Yes. Yep. <laughs> It's a beautiful name. What about the logo? Because the logo is beautiful. Did you create that? That was a design? clip art. No, uh, we will okay. probably be working okay. on some. And my daughter is actually taking graphics design in, oh, in cool. um, Votech right now. And I probably need to conscript her to come up with our own script morium <laughs> design specifically. And then once we get that, I told her, I said, because our, our, outside of our uh, storage is blank right now. I was like, we need Mm -hmm. to come up with something and then I'm going to give you some paint and you're going to go and make it (gasps) wall art, big wall art right on the stuff. So you can't miss the building. It's kind of a little hidden back behind the church right now. So I was like, we need to do something a little, make it pop. I said, but we need to put our heads together this summer and come up with something. And I got confidence she'll figure something out and then we'll update her all of our stuff by then. (laughs) But yeah, now that was just a clip art that I used (laughs) put together. I just can't wait to see what's coming down the pipeline because this is going to be a beautiful independent study for her. <laughs> it will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she can add it to her portfolio and everything. <laughs> I'm 
absolutely. Oh, so many, you know, you just got to love homeschoolers. We can make a lesson out of anything. Exactly. Yes. Oh, well, it's beautiful. Well, script Morium is beautiful. It's that beautiful earworm that just gets caught in your, in your, in your brain and it kind of sticks with you. And it, I think it's something that is going to be such a blessing. It's already blessed so many homeschoolers already, but I could just see great things coming down the wire for it. We were talking about as homeschoolers, we can make a lesson out of anything because that is life and that is life skills. Can you share with us a little bit of your homeschool history and how long you've been homeschooling in your experience? I would love to. Um, I am actually a second generation homeschooler. So I was one of the, what we call trailblazers because we homeschooled before it was trendy um, and there weren't <laughs> a lot of resources around. And I was the oldest of nine. So I kind of, uh, starting in third grade, my parents started homeschooling all of us. And um, it was, I graduated, I went ahead and got my GED to get, I actually technically graduated at 16 because I was just kind of burned out and wanted to move on with life. But I loved my homeschooling experience. And when my husband and I got together, we started talking about having kids. He had had a miserable public school experience because mm -hmm. he was, he's actually borderline genius. He's really smart. And they kept thinking he was retarded. So not to use a bad term, but that back then, that's mm -hmm. what they were telling his mom. That was and the they term were, back then. Yes. And that's what he was hearing a lot as he went through mm -hmm. school. He was just the type, I really feel it now. We look back on it. It's like, I think you were just really right brained. So he didn't mm -hmm. learn the traditional ways. And he felt very ashamed, had a lot of, um, just mm -hmm. came out of that with just a really bad experience from that perspective. I mean, his socialization, friend groups, all that, that was fine. Didn't really have a lot of problems. There was a little bit of bullying, but mostly it was just the way education itself was presented mm -hmm. to him, left him with a really bad taste in his mouth. And he's now a college graduate. He's actually had gone back to school too and gotten his graduate uh, degree since he's been a dad. So um, yeah, we um, we have got it, gotten back into learning mode for him to where he can appreciate that. But the struggle has been something that has been poignant for him. So when we talked about having our kids, it was almost a no brainer. He's like, we're absolutely going to homeschool them. We're just, we're just going to homeschool them. So since my oldest is 17, I've been homeschooling for 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So none of them, they, other than her going to Votech now, which is a supplement to her home education. Um, mm -hmm. So she's, she's doing both. She's doing high school and the Votech and she's learning to adult at a very rapid pace. And <laughs> it's, it's additionally uh, overwhelming and helping her process a lot of that stuff. But yeah, we've, we've been in it since the beginning. So, yep. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. You know, and the more I'm listening to hear you speak about your husband, I'll bet anything he would have been what we now call 2E or twice exceptional. Probably. Right? Gifted. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exceptionally yep. gifted or what they call profoundly gifted yes. on one range. And you just learn very differently, but because you're not mm -hmm. going to learn to the cookie cutter setting that public yep. school wants to put you in, mm -hmm. um, they are going to label you improperly and incorrectly yes. and cast you aside. Yep. That's oh exactly goodness. what happened to him. Poor guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hate that that was experience, but I will say this. Um, God gives us, it's all grist for the meal. Uh -huh. And it certainly turned out to make him a beautiful homeschooling parent. <laughs> Absolutely. He is super supportive and he, he does tutoring for the upper math stuff. Cause that's not my, my strength. Mine's more to the English and the reading and <laughs> maybe a little science. Downstairs. <laughs> yes. Yes. So it is a joint effort and he's in it. So it's great. You sound like an amazing team. And that is what is something that is, is so crucial for anything in parenting and marriage and life, but most definitely in homeschooling it, for that team effort. Mm -hmm. oh, that's wonderful. Okay. Be sure to tune in to episode 17, airing on Wednesday, May 24th, where we continue our conversation with Devra. In episode 17, we learn about some of the challenges and achievements Deborah and her family have faced in their education ministry. We also hear about Deborah and her husband's hopes and dreams for the future of Script Morium Ministries and learn some ways the community can offer support. With the It's Only Homeschooling podcast, we invite your family to join ours for life lessons beyond the classroom. 
through our Salt and Light Serve Spotlight series. We hope to inspire others to answer the call of service. We hope you'll make us one of your regular stops along the way in your homeschool adventures. Remember, education is a journey, not a destination. Until we meet again, take a deep breath and relax. It's only homeschooling. Plant your tongue.